is there a different distinction between each of, each of those in terms of how you manage them? So the, the answer is probably not with, with this exception, and that is um, no matter what you call the vasovagal, the vasovagal faint, so yeah. whether you call it RS, whether you call it AMS, the treatment is exactly the same. It is a reflex faint, and okay, you can so christen it however you want. Now, under the larger umbrella of neurocardiogenic syncope, or what may, people may consider reflex syncopes, you have situational syncope as well. So, for example, if someone has cough syncope, or there's even a disorder of laugh syncope, where if oh someone gosh. has a belly laugh, they can faint, oh. the treatments for that may well be different. You may want to try and target the underlying mechanism. You know, for laugh syncope, it's probably to avoid anything really funny. Yeah. Right? I mean, you're allowed the polite little giggle, but if you have a belly laugh, you generate so much pressure in your chest that you, oh. you end up, you know, cutting off blood supply transiently, and then you can pass out and, and have a syncope. Wow. I've never seen anybody pass out from laughing. I've seen plenty of other ways, but, yeah, but it's, it, it, but it's serious, but you're not going to die. And ultimately, I, I want to be clear, you know, it's, it's not fun to faint a lot. Oh, so sure. even if it's benign, even if it's not something that's going to kill you, it can be life-altering and it can be life-distressing. People, some people stop driving because of this, and yeah. as you know, that's very difficult in our society depending on where you live. What do you say to patients? Just, just you're going to have to be <laughs> patient. You're going to need to be patient. You sort of you know, bring up the old Elmo song, you've got to be patient to be a patient. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Somebody else who watches that. <laughs> That's probably not where you, where you meant to no, go with no, that. No, but I understand that, yeah. No, I think there, there are things that can help, right? So I think from a patient point of view, if you have one of these reflex faints, the key things are education and reassurance. And there's actually older studies documenting that this is what patients have said they want and need. Yeah. Um, and it's, it takes time, but it's simple to do if you can sit down and go through those issues. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, then the question is, what can you do to prevent future episodes? And I think we take a tiered approach to that. So the first tier of therapy is hydration, right? So a lot of the reflex faints occur when we're standing up. What happens when we stand up is blood shifts down from our chest and our heart to below our chest and our heart. Yeah. And less blood comes back to the heart, and we think that's one of the early actions that trigger these reflexes. Mm -hmm. So to try and minimize that, we want to increase the blood volume, fill the tank, if you will. And yeah. often that involves having people drink lots of water. So I actually ask patients to drink three liters of water a day, okay. which is a fair bit. It can be done, but it, it takes work. Right. Yeah. And a lot of these patients with reflex faints are younger, a little more women than men, but affects both sexes, but tend to be younger people and tend to have a lowish blood pressure. Mm -hmm. They're not you know, middle or some would argue greater than middle age like I am, yeah, yeah. Um, where the blood pressure usually tends to go up as we age. And so in this younger group, we actually ask them to increase their salt intake. And in fact, if you ask them what they eat, some people, you know, really have gotten the message from the American Heart Association year after year to cut back on your salt, and they follow a very low sodium diet. Mm -hmm. And you need in the body sodium to hold on to the water. Yeah, yeah, right? So yeah. you want to drink the water and then they take the salt and that helps the kidney hold onto the water and hopefully expand their blood volume. Yeah. And that may help decrease these reactions. The other thing is when they feel like they're going to faint, often it's because they're going to faint. And we want people to pay attention to those symptoms and not ignore it. Okay. So some people have the sense that they want to fight through it. And usually those are the people that faint. Yeah. Right? When they feel like they're going to faint, if they can get down on the ground and lie down, then the blood comes back to the heart and it reverses the reflex that's triggered stops yeah, yeah. and everything reverses in several minutes. Yeah. Um, so it's getting them to pay attention, recognizing the symptoms, paying attention and getting down if they can and that prevents injury if nothing else. That's yeah. the other concern. If you right. faint in a uncontrolled way, you, you can hurt yourself. And then there are drugs that can be used, but the truth is that 90% of patients we see, that I see, I don't put on any drugs. I treat with the non-pharmacological approaches and with education. Right. There are some people that faint a lot. 40% of the population will faint at least once in their life. Mm -hmm. Half will faint twice. They probably don't need drugs, but yeah. there are people that faint, you know, a dozen times, maybe a dozen times a year, where it's burdensome enough that they want to try drugs. That's one of the things we're working on is trying to develop drugs that are effective. It's, it, there aren't really drugs that are widely effective yeah. as there are for other forms of heart disease. Um, but if someone is having a lot of problems, then that might be an option. But what people need to know is that's not 
usually the correct option. The correct op option is usually non-pharmacological approaches and just having the patient understand what's happening to them so they can take corrective action. They're the best judge of when they're going to faint. They know what it feels like. Yep. I don't. And if they recognize it, they can protect themselves. Well, that's what these videos are all about, is educating people that know how to control their lives and, and uh, take back some of the areas of their lives that they may have lost before. Dr. Raj, thank you. You've been very, very helpful. I appreciate all your time. Thank you for having me.